Welcome into this edition of Inside Bronkbuster Athletics. I'm Mike Philosoph. Pleased to be joined with a guy that's got a pretty nice profile coming in. Uh, the new starting quarterback for the uh, Garden City Bronkbusters, that is Jaron Williams, transfer from Miami. So we appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting doing some digging on your on your background because when you started playing football, you weren't a quarterback. You were an offensive lineman. Take yeah. us, how in the heck did that happen? <laughs> Well, yeah, so actually that was my first year playing football uh, when I was five years old. Um, and I just kind of got out there, you know, I always just watch football on TV. And, um, you know, coach just kind of put me in that position, put my hand in the dirt. And, uh, you know, I was a big I was a big physical guy back then, you know, as a young kid. So, um, you know, it's kind of my first position, just kind of getting out there and, and getting my feet wet. Quarterback, I know you won like a peewee championship when you were 10, but why quarterback? What made you switch positions? Um, you know, growing up, I always had a strong arm, um, and you know, I would always, you know, play with the guys, and I would be throwing the ball, and um, it's just something that I kind of fell in love with. And um, you know, my my dad and my mom were um, able to get me to camps early and get me the training that I needed to, to kind of um, get the technique down and the fundamentals. And it's just it's just something that I kind of fell in love with, and uh, I have grown a passion for it early. So were there and maybe not even quarterbacks in the NFL, but guys who you kind of modeled or tried to model your game after. Right. Um, growing up, you know, I love watching Michael Vick play um, as, a, as a kid. Um, also enjoy, really enjoy watching Aaron Rodgers, um, just his poise and his clutch ability, and, you know, in those, in those t tight situations, he always comes through. Um, and also now, I really like watching Deshaun Watson. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks. And, you know, I was able to train with him a couple of times, so I was able to kind of see how he, he moves up close um, and personal. So, you know, I really enjoy studying those guys and breaking those guys down and, um, you know, kind of modeling my game after them a little bit. For people that didn't follow you in, in high school, it's, it's interesting because you ran an offense. The, the running offense was designed basically around what Gus Malzahn runs at Auburn. You ran that yeah. vertical passing attack that they run at Oregon, mm -hmm. and then you ran the air raid. So where most high school quarterbacks are not making line protection calls, you were. So mm -hmm. take us through how complex that system was and how that helped you mm -hmm. going into college football. The, the biggest thing that I felt that helped me transition from high school to college was how much we passed the ball. Like we were really attacking the air, um, even first down, second down. We were really a pass-heavy team, and I feel like you know, by me seeing those different um, combinations, seeing those different coverages and having to uh, make those tight throws sometimes, it really kind of helped me um, transition into college. You know, when I got to college, the speed was a little bit faster, but I was able to adjust relatively quickly just because of how much experience I had in high school doing it. How much fun was that, being able to throw the football? Because a quarterback's mm -hmm. dream is to throw the football, I would yeah. assume. Yeah, it, it was really fun. You know, we, we put up a lot of points, especially my senior year. Um, but me and the guys, we, we had a lot of fun doing it, uh, just putting the ball up, making plays. And, you know, we, we like to take shots down the field, too. So, you know, it was always fun uh, doing that. And the numbers obviously definitely back that up. Mm -hmm. You originally committed to Kentucky yes, back in 2016. Then you decommitted and then committed to them again. Mm -hmm. Why the change? What, what was the biggest factor behind you going and, and changing your mind to Miami? Right. Um, you know, Kentucky, they, they reached out to me very early. We built that relationship, um, and I committed. I committed really early and um, you know the reason I decommitted was just to explore other options you know um, and I have a lot of respect for Kentucky as a program and coach Stoops and you know I, I didn't want to be committed and visit other schools you know while I'm committed to them so I just wanted to uh, you know respectively open my my commitment kind of just see other other places and really make a, a good decision on where I want to be at in the future. What was it about Miami? Now for somebody that's been to Miami and you obviously played there, I mean, Miami kind of sells itself and, and the program, it's a private school, but what was it about the you that sold you? Um, it was a lot of different things. You know, I went up there when they played Notre Dame and it was, it was very electric. Um, but really just that atmosphere and playing and the history behind the you and just all those factors that played into it, you know, I just felt like I would put myself on a platform where I could show my time to the world you know, playing there and um, also have guys around me that are, um, you know, good and that are really good and can play at that level. And, you know, my, my goal was to win a champ national championship. That's my goal. So, um, you know, when, when I did my due diligence, I felt like it was the best fit for me to go to Miami and uh, accomplish my dreams. The whole 
mystique of playing in a Division One school and then having to transfer mm -hmm. to Garden City. And there, there's a lot of different storylines. One of them, there was a grad transfer coming from, from Houston, mm -hmm. uh, Derek King, and, and they basically, I, I don't know if you want to say anointed him as the starter, right. but all these things happen. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind? You play as a, as a red shirt, and now all of a sudden things change. What's going through your mind? Uh, you know, my, what's going through my mind, you know, it's not, it's not a thing where I'm looking like, oh, well, they got a guy coming in, I'm, you know, worried about, I'm a competitor, you know, I don't care who comes in, you know, I love competition, you know, I feel like that's going to bring the best out of me. So, um, it wasn't so more so of a com competition thing, it was more so of me just, I just felt like I couldn't be the best version of myself, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just so glad that I get the opportunity to come here and play for Coach Minnick and Coach O and um, just get an opportunity to, um, you know, further my career. So I'm just, I'm just really excited about the opportunity. Most people would ask, why Garden City? I'm gonna kind of compound that. How much did you know about Garden City and, and why Garden City? The reason why I really came here is because, number one, you know, the Coach O, you know, I talked to him a lot on the phone and, you know, me and him built that relationship. And I, felt, I feel like that he's a very knowledgeable coach and he can help me develop, um, not, even so much on the field, but a lot off the field as well, you know. And, you know, we watch film and he breaks it down to me and he's just, you know, continuing to help me get it mental, you know, get the mental aspect of it. So when I'm out there, I'm not thinking as much. I can just play. And, you know, also, too, the players here, you know, I feel like these guys here are hungry. You know, they want to work, you know, and um, that's what I want to be around. You know, I want to be around hungry guys. I want to be around guys that, that strive to win a national championship. And I feel like that's the mindset here. And I'm just, I'm just glad to be a part of that. I know you come from a really good family. I know your dad was in contact with Coach Minnick as well. They've talked. Mm -hmm. What, what has your dad told you throughout this entire process? Um, you know, he's just been encouraging me. You know, just telling me that this is a marathon. You know, you're gonna have bumps. You're gonna have bumps in the road. You're gonna have ups and downs. So you just gotta keep going. You gotta keep working. Um, keep your head up. So you know, he's just been encouraging me through the whole way, and uh, pretty much just telling me, you know, just stay focused and just keep working, and everything else take care of itself. COVID has changed everything. You, yes. you and I both know that. So your yes. initial reaction to everything being moved to the spring mm -hmm. was what? You know, I was uh, at first I was like, you know, I was a little bummed out a little bit because I was really excited about playing, but you know, you got to adjust. You got to adjust to these different circumstances. So, you know, when they told me that, you know, I just say, hey. It's not going to stop nothing I'm doing. I'm going to just keep working hard. And I'm going to keep preparing myself. So when I do, when it, when it is time to play, I'm prepared and I'm ready to go. People have asked me. I've asked Coach Minnick. I mean, we've had conversations about this because as mm -hmm. soon as the decision was made for everything to go to the spring, everybody's like, well, what's going to happen to all these big four-star guys that are transferring in? Mm -hmm. And then the NCAA, it's so unknown right now. So unknown, yeah. So do you envision yourself being here in the spring and playing? I'm here right now and um, until – you know, I know otherwise, that's, my, that's what I'm focusing on, is playing here in the spring. So if anything changes, then, then that's that. But as of now, you know, I'm right here. I'm, I'm a bronc buster, and I'm attacking it that way. What are you specifically looking for? Is it power mm -hmm. five? Does somebody have to blow you away between now and, let's say, March 27th when the season starts? Um, so what I'm looking for is, you know, I, my dream has always been to win a national championship. So I want to go somewhere where um, – you know, that's the mindset. You know, I want to go somewhere where I have competition. You know, I, don't, I, I want to go somewhere where um, basically I can further my development. I want to keep getting better and better and better. I want to go somewhere where I feel like I'm going to get pushed to that level. And also, um, you know, I just want to, I want to feel comfortable, you know, when I'm there. I want to build that relationship with the coaches. I want them to get to know me, you know, for the person that I am and really just, you know, look me in my eyes and, you know, just really get to know each other. You know, I want to build that relationship. That's very important to me, too. For you personally to, to make this decision to come this route, and, and again, when you go from a Division One school to junior college, right. and you walked in the facilities and everything else, what's the first thing that Coach Minnick told you about what you can expect from your experience here? Um, he he told me that basically um, I can expect to keep my development going. You know, I'm going to keep getting better. Um, you know, with Coach O, we talked talk to me a lot about Coach O and how he'll be able to help me. And um, also, you know, the weight program, I'll be able to get in there extra, you know, however however he can help me um, keep getting better, you know. So, you know, he has that mindset of you come in, work hard, you know, do what you're supposed to do and um, everything to take care of yourself. But that's that was kind of his message to me, just come in, be that leader 
and, um, you know, get the guys rallied and, you know, let's go to war. We're glad you're here and we appreciate you coming on the show. I'm glad to be here and I thanks, thank you for having me.